Thank you. Thanks for having me. Merci. Nous allons maintenant passer à la discussion. Uh, thank you. Now uh, we'll move to the discussion with Sandy Crowley from the Green Party in Canada. Good evening, Sandy. I'm trying to unlock my. Um... Hello. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We can hear you. I, I'm I'm trying to unlock my video. Uh, okay, start my video. Here we go. Okay, here we are. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for including me in this important conversation. Comment vous situez-vous au Parti Vert du Canada? You as a Green Party of Canada, how do you position yourself with respect to uh, what was done by the Liberals, uh, the failure of uh, Bill C-10, and the announcements made by the Minister Gilbo uh, to uh, eventually increase the budget of uh, uh, CBC and uh, the uh, content and line, uh, everything. Yeah, what is your position? And then we could perhaps talk about uh, the program of the Green Party in order to improve the audiovisual sector in Canada. Indeed, um, C10 was a, certainly a step in the right direction. It was very disappointing that the uh, Conservative Party um, you know, blocked it on specious grounds, free speeches, and please, thank you. Sounded like Donald Trump. Um, but, um, and I, I, I have to say that the minister, I'm sorry, I, I'm late to coming to this particular event, so I didn't hear what Ms. Monsieur Guilbault said uh, this evening, but I think he was on the right track. I think the, his party let him down. It was too late, as some of my colleagues have pointed out, C10 uh, um, and regulation uh, and taxation, uh, curbing the web giants uh, is absolutely necessary. It's, it's late. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this for a long time. Um, we're, we're always, uh, you know, playing catch up with the technology that comes across the border. But um, C10 was, was a good step and the work of the Heritage Committee. Uh, thank you, um, Ms. McPherson and uh, your colleagues on uh, uh, the, Janet, the Janet Yale report that gave us a lot of good clues. Uh, the, the copyright reform, which, uh, you know, Harper's reform, which wreaked so much damage to our publishing sector, to our uh, writers and so on. I mean, the, the whole sector needs more support, but certainly the audiovisual sector needs more support. So uh, the, the, um, the, the Green Party, which is not likely to form the government, uh, believes that uh, a, a much more money can be invested in public broadcasting. As you know, we're ninth in the, in the developed world per capita funding for public broadcasting, which is just crazy. Uh, so we think, um, I, I typed it into the Q&A, we think that you could give the, we ought to give the CBC uh, about $2 billion a year and guarantee that for five years so that they don't have to sell advertising, that they can start working to fulfill a mandate that includes uh, native languages, uh, indigenous languages, and, and so on. I mean, there's a lot of work for the, uh, for the um, public broadcaster to do, and it needs much more support, as the whole sector does. So uh, I, I can take it apart a little further than that if you wish, but uh, that's, that's my first volley in terms of C10. It was a step in the right direction. Uh, we, we've got to recognize the courage of the Australians and some of the Europeans and standing up to the hegemony of the, um, hegemony of the, um, you know, the American cultural machine, the so-called cultural machine. So, um, you know, and, and the, the audio visual sector should be doing a lot better. We've all, always been uh, up against uh, distribution. We've always been disadvantaged through distribution and the web giants are just the latest tool that's been used to swamp us with, um, with, with um, uh, content that um, we can't compete with because we don't invest enough money in it, public money. Qu'est-ce que vous feriez de différent uh, dans les prochains mois? Uh, what would you do differently in the months to come uh, for the reform of the CRTC? And how do we go uh, farther uh, with uh, copyrights uh, from GAFA um, and uh, the law for uh, uh, the uh, harmful content? And what would you say? How could we reform the CRTC? Um, the CRTC, as far as I'm concerned, has the powers. They only exempted the, the internet. <laughs> they, they didn't uh, say, oh, we're never going to touch the internet. 
Um, I, it's a complex matter in terms of uh, trying to address misinformation and all of that. Uh, you know, the, the, the havoc that's been wreaked by not having appropriate regulation of, um, of online content. But uh, I, I certainly disagree with my uh, colleague from the uh, Conservative Party who suggested the CRTC's, uh, CRTC's course is run. Uh, uh, we, we need the CRTC, we need the Competition Bureau, and we need the Copyright Board. And actually, they, they need to work uh, in tandem with each other. Uh, in terms of copyright, um, I've long agreed with the position of the Directors Guild that directors should have authorship. I know uh, the producers who are listening in won't be happy to hear us say that, but it, that's, that's my opinion. Um, th there are many things in copyright reform, uh, for instance, in visual arts, there should be the right of resale, which is well, well established elsewhere in the world. And there's no reason not to have that sort of thing. There's a much broader, uh, I, I think Ms. McPherson was, uh, was hinting at, there, there's a much broader strategy across the sector, not just for the audio visual sector. We need to work together. But uh, in ter terms of copyright, um, the, the Harper, um, the Harper uh, so-called reforms, modernization, did more harm than good in publishing, for instance, I know, because I was working there. Uh, and there's no reason why uh, Canada's film and television and audiovisual sector can't be as distinguished in the world as our novelists are if we take, take, have the correct strat strategies and policies and legislation in place to make sure that we can get our content, we can support uh, good content creation. We have the talent, everyone has said that. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. We don't have the resources. We haven't invested the resources and it's not gonna come from the private sector. Mm -hmm. Somebody was suggesting that pr private money should now save the, uh, save the AV sector. That's not gonna happen, uh, you know. Le thème numéro deux, c'est investir dans le talent canadien. So, uh, theme number two is invest into Canadian uh, talent. You know that we lack uh, severely manpower in Canada. How can we support uh, the film industry in Canada being in this context? I don't think we lack uh, manpower in terms of people who are willing to work in an industry. If the industry isn't supported and doesn't have sufficient resources, then people will naturally be drawn to the magnets of Hollywood or Great Britain, uh, you know, wh where they can, where they can, in fact, uh, take part in, 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 in more, you know, in, in more, uh, in, in, gre in greater supported um, uh, production. But we don't have any lack of talent. We just, we just lack the, the, the investment. There's plenty of talent. Here we we've proven that. I mean, uh, you know, you can't you can't get a crew in Vancouver or Halifax because uh, American producers are coming up and hiring the people to do it. Uh, the DGC knows this very well. Uh, there's no lack of talent. It's just a lack of investment. Merci. Thank you. Back to Trina for the last two questions. Uh, just wanted to when you talk about investment, are you kind of likening the industry right now to a group of startups who have lots of, well, you know, because there is something in that, that um, there are so many now entrepreneurs in the business. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I, I think in the, independent production, the independent production sector is, is the key to our success. I, I, I don't think that the public broadcaster should be supported to, in order to produce a whole lot of drama, a whole lot of documentary, a whole lot of children's programming. I think that the, the, the public broadcaster, for instance, and the private broadcaster should learn not to, uh, to uh, bid up the cost of American, uh, of American product instead of, uh, of, of investing in uh, independent producers here, but it's independent production that is the key to our success. And, and it's proven itself, certainly in Quebec, it's quite obvious, but uh, it, it's obvious everywhere. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a strange irony to me that one of the big stars uh, in, in the documentary sector, which I have some experience with, is Ken Burns, who would never have been a producer if he hadn't seen the early work of Colin Lowe and so on at the, at the National Film Board. Uh, so, 
you know, I mean, we have a gold mine. If you look at the National Ar uh, Archives, Library and Archives, if you look at the, the actual footage that is sitting there, we, you know, we could be telling the most amazing stories with a, an historical perspective. That's just one form of documentary. There's no lack of talent. It's just a lack of investment. The entrepreneurs are the, are the key to it. Uh, I think the web giants, uh, uh, you, you know, um, should should invest in should be encouraged to invest in that they've got so much money let's set up an arm's length um not for profit uh um uh mechanism to to fund independent producers uh, who can sell their stuff all over the world uh there, there's no there, there's there, there are many stories there we have all the talent we just need to invest more well we need to invest more in diversity too that's one yes. of the things that I don't think the sector can pat itself on the back for all its accomplishments. Uh, agree, agree. And do you, when you look around at what's happening uh, with various groups, some of them have been mentioned, uh, the uh, Indigenous grants to Indigenous, uh, different uh, media, the Canadian Media Fund, Telefilm. Uh, is this the way to go about it? Is there something that you see that can be done that really encourages uh, people who are not white uh, to tell their stories? Absolutely. In a Look, professional way with budgets and yes. you know, crews and all sorts of fripperies like that. But yeah, I mean, look what you know Jesse Wenty's doing with the, uh, the the fund that he's set up there. Uh, our fund, our federal funding agencies have been wrestling with this issue. I know they are. Uh, I talked to a, a number of arts art service organizations across the sector in live performance presenters. Everyone is wrestling with this. There is an acknowledgement. Yes, we have to acknowledge a colonial attitude, uh, a, a, a systemic racism within. The, the, the elites that have making, been making the decisions and so on. The sector actually is ready to wrestle with this. Uh, I was encouraged by our, our NDP colleague there uh, reporting on, on the good advice she's getting from across the sector. Uh, we're, we're, we're quite aware of, of the problem and we are wrestling with it. Uh, I, I think uh, the Canada Council is wrestling with it. I think Telefilm and the Canadian Media Fund are, are wrestling with it. And, and they, they need to be supported and, and resourced in order to do so. Uh, it, it's a struggle, but uh, we're, we're in it. And I think we just have to keep going. I, I think there's a, a, a new and wonderful uh, respect uh, uh, for, for our indigenous culture. And uh, that has a lot to do with uh, the climate question, which I hope comes up as well. Okay, the climate question. Well, <laughs> I, I, uh, that was fast. Well, uh, you know, the, the 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 primary plank on the platform that we that we um, the, the priority plank that, that the, on the platform that was released today is that every uh, federal agency, of course, we we, we can't uh, we can only lead by example in terms of provincial funding agencies, but every federal agency that funds any kind of production in any medium or genre uh, needs to add a, 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 um, an envelope or establish a program that specifically funds uh, creative works that do engage with the climate emergency. Um, I, I'm sure a number of people here are probably aware of Seth Klein's book, The Good War. Uh, you know. Uh, we need a government that is, uh, we need to push our government, whoever it may be, um, in the way that, uh, that, the, um, that Mackenzie King was pushed to support the Second World War. It's not a perfect analogy because right now, it, 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 the enemy is, is much more complicated than just fascism, but um, we, we need to fully engage. And it's, it's only our creative sector that's actually gonna move the public, uh, the public mind that will push governments. Um, the, the, the analog or simile that I've, I've been using, when I look at the, the major parties, I see the NDP coming up and starting to say, yes, we have to get out of fossil fuels and finally, and, you know, hard targets. Uh, the, the three mainstream parties, unfortunately, 
Um, my, my analogy is the house is on fire and they want to put in a new sprinkler system. Let's get serious, people. John Greer said, you know, the reason we had the National Film Board, basically, was to make propaganda to get Canada into the war. Let's be frank. We need to do something similar. And uh, I don't think we should make any bones about it. I know there are lots of artists who are willing to jump at this. There are lots of there's amazing creative work going on in the theater. Uh, and, 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 in, and filmmakers and so on, who are ready to engage with this and to tell the real story. And that's what we should be doing. We should be funding that. Through what means? Through what means is that? Uh, every, every, well, the, the Canada Council, the, the, the Telefilm, the Canadian Media Fund, the Canadian Music Fund, should all recognize, as we have with BIPOC, with, with Indigenous, uh, with, with colonization, with with, with the un underserved uh, communities in terms of, uh, of supporting their creative work. We need to support creative work that engages the public and the artists with the reality that we all face, that, we're, we're, that our grandchildren are gonna choke to death if we don't get busy here. So Sandy, can I just uh, conclude by asking you, you're among the friends here, these are your people. Um, how would you advise them a question I asked before, uh, to push harder for what they want. What are the means and the opportunities to get there, to get our story across? Well, we, we have had some pretty strong and united advocacy in, in the past. I mean, going back to the Massey Commission and the establishment of the Canadian Conference of the Arts and the Canada Council for the Arts and so on. We need to pull together again in that same way. It was too bad when the, uh, the, the for instance, the, uh, the Canada, uh, Canadian Conference of the Arts faltered and, 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 and just fell apart. And we, we used to work together as a sector. Um, I, 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 I have great respect for Monsieur Guilbeault and uh, he, he came to an event that we organized around greening uh, the industry, by the way, you know, all this stuff about greening our own industry that's tinkering, we have to get serious about it. Only government can do this. Individuals and individual sectors cannot, cannot address this climate thing. Anyway, uh, I think we need to keep pushing and um, we need to keep finding and hoping that those um, people who are put in, in place who, who actually have the wit to grapple with the files. And I think that this minister that we, ha we have had in this last uh, liberal government was probably uh, one of the best we've had in some time. And he, he was encouraging us to push him. And that's what we have to keep doing. We have to keep talking. Uh, we have to keep talking to uh, our, our clever, uh, very, very clever civil servants and our political leaders whose ears are open and who are actually recognize the, the immense value of our creative, uh, our, our creative sector. Uh, it, it becomes more and more important as everything else gets automated. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughts. Much appreciated. Uh, Patrick, do you want to, uh, do you have the, a list of some of the audience questions? I have to reach up here to get them. Maybe we could, um, okay, here's one. Um, with so much foreign content available, do you see a time when the CBC will be completely Canadian? Um, it, it should be now, uh, you know, it, it's, it's only, I mean, I, I put it in the Q&A. Uh, I've been at this a little too long maybe, but I happen to know that the CBC, I hope this is not the case anymore, but I believe the last time I checked, the CBC had to report to five different federal agencies once a year in order to maintain its position and its funding and all of that stuff. It's insane. It's also not given enough money. The amount of, of, of extra money that adver selling advertising, for instance, uh, it's crazy. I mean, it's pocket change in Ottawa compared to what's spent in other things. And it, it's just, I, I think it's because politicians don't like to be criticized by a, a, a strong professional nonpartisan press. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not, it's not, it's unconscionable. The CBC should be 100% Canadian. I, I'm, I'm not saying that they shouldn't, uh, you know, sh show a British film or an Australian film or a film from New Zealand or a German film, uh, you know, or a Russian film. But really, they, they should be predominantly Canadian. And the only reason they're not is because uh, of the lack of resources.